Hey there everyone, it's Matt from Creative Reviews and today we're taking a look at the Sony Xperia Tablet S. As you see, I saw the Xperia S a few days ago. Its release date is September 7th, 2012, that's a Friday. And it's an upgrade from the original Sony Tablet S. They've added the Xperia name to it to make it part of that Xperia ecosystem which you first see with the smartphones that they have out. They have a nice line of smartphones that's out. Take a look at those, but those are separate. This is a brand new thing. It's, um, again, it's an update on the Sony Tablet S. This one does have that IR that the old one did, and it's most described as a TV accessory, but I think it's much, much more than this. Before we continue with the information, let me go down the specs. We're going to begin with the camera. The camera resolution on the rear is an 8 megapixel camera. And looking at it, it was pretty clear, but I don't like that the viewfinder, when you use the camera, doesn't allow you to see the entire screen. As for the iPad, which I use, uh, when I'm in camera mode or video mode, you can see the entire picture filling the entire screen. But for this one, it does not fill up the entire screen. It's more of a one-fourth of the entire screen in the center kind of viewfinder, and I think it's needless, needlessly small when you have more green real estate than that. In the front, you have a one-megapixel camera, which looks okay, but you know, one-megapixel isn't anything to really see. It is better than the, than the iPads, either the two or the three, because the iPad only has VGA resolution on it. As for the inputs and outputs, it has a good expansion slot. Of course, it has an SD memory card slot, and that's a full SD size, not the micro. So you can use anything, pop anything in there, and gain access to all your favorite files. It does have the headphone output and a multi-port output. Processor, very important thing. The processor type is an NVIDIA Tegra 3 Mobile. It is a quad-core ARM card. Sorry, Cortex A9 CPU with 1.4 gigahertz, which I think is very, it's needed now. I was about to say it's very useful, but it's now needed. It has to have a quad core processor. Single cores don't even cut it. Quad or dual cores are okay, but to be competitive now, you do have to have a quad core. Taking a look at the weight and dimensions, the dimensions are not the screen but the thing the entire tablet itself 9.45 inches width the height is 0.35 inches to 0.47 inches I'll get more to that its height or its depth is 6.87 inches now I really wouldn't refer this, I'm actually looking at the Sony website right now, going over these specs to make sure I get everything right. I wouldn't call that the depth, I call the depth, I guess you would say the thinness of it. And it, if you've seen the video you can see that the Xperia S tablet and the previous one, the Tablet S, they look like a rolled up newspaper. And imagine when you roll up a newspaper you hold it, one side's thicker. One side you use to grip, and it turns into like this round little thing where it eventually, I'd say, triangles down into a sharp point, much like the MacBook Air does. This one has a very good grip on it. It has nice tactile bumps on the back, so you can hold it there. But it's a lot smaller than the original uh, Sony S tablet. But I like it more. It's very thin. They've reduce the thickness of this device so much it's now like iPad thin. But moving more about that, it's not made of an aluminum body like a lot of people are saying. It looks like it's it has an aluminum body but it is very alright, I don't know how to say this. It's plasticky, but it is not a device that feels like you could bend and twist it as a very firm body. It's a very nice feeling plastic and again on the grip with the little bumps it's very holdable with no case whatsoever. You can hold it very very easily. Uh, moving on we're going to go on to the convenience section. It does have 
an infrared remote control functionality with macro functionality as well. And that's great because you can use this as a uni universal remote for anything, not just Sony products, but anything you have up there. Have an, I have an LG TV, I could use it there. I could use it on my Fios box and control it from there. So you have your tablet with you at all times in your house. You turn on the TV with it, you turn it off when you leave. It's very convenient. And I assume they're going to be doing more things with this infrared technology as well. Moving on, we have the memory, the RAM. The internal memory is one gigabyte. I think that's very average now. That's good. Uh, the software, you're going to be very interested to know that it is Android 4.0. That's the newest one and it looks very, very clean. Again, refer to the first video of the Xperia Tablet S. It's very quick to respond and very clean, and they don't really put a skin over it that much that makes it into some jumbled up thing like a lot of uh, uh, producers do with their phone. Next, we're going to move on to the wireless and networking, which it does have a Bluetooth standard version 3.0 and it's Wi-Fi if you're interested in the specifics is 800.11 ABGN uh, for the matter this does not come with a 3G or 4G connection which I think I may have gotten spoiled with it the iPad does come with it and it's a non-contract plan I believe they should all have it they shouldn't tie you into one tablet for the next two years and they should give you an option to be mobile because without a mobile cellular connection you're stuck being in your house and that's just not useful if you want this to be a very light product you want to be able to be you want to be able to have it used everywhere moving on we have the display the display technology is a TFT color LCD its resolution is 1280 by 800 and the screen size is 9.4 inches it is a widescreen where if you, again, I'm going to refer to the iPad because it's the most notable tablet out there. The iPad has a 4 by 3 screen ratio. This one has a 16 by 9 widescreen ratio. The iPad is 9.7 inches. But this Sony tablet feels a lot smaller. And in a good way, it just feels very compact. Not as compact as a 7-inch tablet, which I think is a little bit too small, but very usably compact. Next, we're going to move on to the power, which means the battery life. And approximately the battery life playing video is 12 hours. Browsing the internet with Wi-Fi is 10 hours. And the battery type itself is a lithium-ion internal battery, which cannot be removed unless you want to unscrew the entire thing and, and play around inside if you know what you're doing. And finally, we're going to talk about the storage capacity and the pricing. I think it has very competitive pricing and your run-of-the-mill storage capacities for a tablet, which I think are now getting a little bit too small for what people use them for. The storage capacity can top out at 64 gigabytes, but it also comes in 32 and 16. Uh, as of now, I think the tablets really could go up to 120 gigabytes if you can get it to fit and not feel any heavier than its lightest or smallest counterpart, meaning the 16 gigabytes should feel the same weight as the 128. Because, you know, people would pay a lot more to get this. But it does come in those, and the pricing for it, 16 gigabytes with Wi-Fi starts at $399. 32 gigabytes with Wi-Fi is $499, and 64 with Wi-Fi, of course, is $599. So you run the mobile prices, it beats the iPad by $100, and it's competitive with the pricing of the iPad 2 in the Apple Store. And I'd say that the screen resolution on this Sony Tablet S does beat the iPad 2 by far, and it comes really close to being very competitive with the iPad 3's retina display. I say the colors on the Sony Xperia S or Tablet S, it has very deep colors and it's better than the retina display on the iPad. I think it's great. 
Moving on, we have features on here, which I know everyone is very interested in. You can see the picture up here. So refer to that and use your mind's eye and picture it however you'd like. Or take a look at the other video while I'm talking. This has a very good feature I would like. I don't consider myself clumsy, but it's always good to have this. It's splash proof, or supposedly splash proof. And it says under the definition here, Xperia tablet, Tablet's splash proof design helps provide assurance that your tablet is protected from the elements. Now it says elements, but it only refers to water in this case. As for uh, their cameras, I do have the TX10 uh, Sony Cybershot camera where it does protect you from any element, meaning freezing, waterproof, dustproof, and dropproof. I'd say those were the elements. This is one single element. I think that description on the Sony website's a little bit incorrect. I wouldn't say false, but I think it's just incorrect, and they should alter that. Um, you have different modes in here. One that's being talked about is the guest mode, where you can limit you know, what somebody uses your tablet on, if it's your kid, if it's a friend, that they don't download a bunch of garbage on your tablet, or if it's a kid, that they don't go to anything inappropriate that, they, that you don't want them to see. I think that's very good. Of course, since this runs Android, you get the uh, Google Play Store. And as of now, on uh, when it's released on September 7th, 2012, you get $45 in feature films from Google Play, which is a good little you know, reason to, to get this thing. As of now, it's not been released yet. It's being released on September 7th, on Friday. And uh, it's expected to do well. It got a really good review from CNET. It's a really nice tablet. And I think the accessory that will make this is a little carrying case that comes with a keyboard in it. Now, if you've seen anything from the Microsoft Surface tablet, this almost matches it, but it, of course, it's not a Windows tablet, so it doesn't have the mouse function. Um, take a look at the picture here in front of you. You can see the tablet sitting up on its case, and you can see that there is a keyboard in front of it. Now that is a perfectly flat keyboard. It's not raised at all. It does not click whatsoever, and it's much like using the touchscreen of any kind of device, phone or tablet. And it's about just tapping but I tried it in store and it's extremely responsive. Although there is no pressure or vibration or anything to indicate the key is pressed, you you know it's pressed because the keys themselves are like almost plasticky flat, whereas the spacing around the keys it it does feel like a soft material, like velvet or some soft material. So you can tell when you're touching something that you mean to and when you're not. And it's very easy to use your home row keys and type very fast on this. I was very impressed by this case. The case does come for... It doesn't come with it, but it is an accessory for $99.99. And it's something I would suggest to get, although with this little newspaper design, I don't think you need it unless you want to be using this uh, keyboard accessory. Speaking of the keyboard on the device itself, it's very responsive. There's no tactile feedback, at least that I had turned on, but it is it runs very well. It's really quick and responsive. So I just wanted to give you a review of the upcoming Sony Xperia Tablet S. I think it's going to do very well. They're expand Sony's expanding the Xperia line to a lot of different devices and I think they're doing a good thing. It was a really great update, needed update for its Tablet S and I hope it does well and I'll be doing more reviews on this in the future. Okay, this has been Matt from Creative Reviews and hope you follow me on Twitter, find me on Facebook, WordPress, like, dislike this, and comment on it. Alright, and I'll see you guys next time.